Clearing the Plains uh, by James Daschuk is a damning indictment on uh, the Canadian, the founding of Canada, uh, founding of Canada on uh, using the politics of starvation, of uh, marginalizing uh, the First Nations people, of breaking uh, the treaty promises that we have. Uh, it targets specifically uh, the found, founding father of, of Canada, one of the, one of the, primary founding father of Canada, John A. Macdonald. Uh, but it is not, I don't think it is a book that is actually particularly that interested in John A. Macdonald as much as it is of using him as a representative of how uh, Canada itself uh, screwed over Native peoples. Hi, it's Jay. I did this as a buddy read with uh, Sean the Book Maniac. Uh, it is is, uh, and uh, he, I'm sure, will be coming out with a review of this, which if, uh, is probably my, my whatever my take is, it'll be half as hot a take as what his will probably be on what is uh, surely uh, the core of the kind of the shameful, rotten heart of what it means to be uh, a white Canadian uh, living nowadays, uh, and um how that has its basis at the very, very founding of Canada. Um, this book is divided into two parts. Uh, the first, the first, first part of it is about sort of the introduction of disease into North America, how that decimated uh, the, uh, the the populations throughout North and South America. Uh, that you know, potentially, you know, we're we're talking going from uh, ninety million people to have and having like a 95% death rate uh even and that is probably the very very top 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 thing as Daschuk says in the book you you can never we will never really know the extent of the devastation that the introduction of uh european diseases into the uh, con into the continents of uh north and south america had uh on this thing we just we can we just know the results the massive wholesale deaths uh the massive changes this rot um and then with that uh, also with the incursion of the uh, europeans and the kind of this new economy uh how the the surviving native peoples recombined to uh make to to adapt to this new economy which is primarily kind of fur trading but also uh with the introduction of the horse uh into uh, north america uh and uh you know the demand for the bison which uh leads to the extinction of the bison uh the you know functional extinction of the bison um uh coming coming at sort of at the founding at the at the time where canada was being founded um this um when we we get into what I think is the core of the book, that I mean, this that that is all really important kind of setup for this book. Uh, how what what were the native people looking for when they entered into an agreement with the newly formed uh, government, newly formed Canada, uh, is that they were looking for. We know the bison are about to go extinct. We um, know that fur trading is going is 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 ending. We've basically everything is. The the extent of the the market just hoovering up all the furs has has decimated that that is no longer going to be a thing. The new economy is going to be agriculture, and the native leadership leaderships basically went with the thing of we want to be trained uh, and get a transit transition into agriculture. We want um, supports. Um, in ex uh, when there is famine and 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 uh, disease because they're well acquainted with that uh and we're doing this we're doing this in exchange for giving uh Canada the legal right to come into the plains to come to come across Canada to open it up to set settlers we in exchange for all that exchange for all that wealth and all that resources we want into the new economy and we want support because there are obviously going to be bad times coming uh for that and we we need that the, the government of Canada which under uh, John A Macdonald had uh something called the national policy which is sort of the founding thing of Canadian of of Canada the national policy was to really boil it down incredibly simplistically, uh, the building of the Canadian Pacific Railway across Canada to unify this gigantic swath of land, uh, and to bring, that would bring settlers in and all that land along that railway was going to become extremely valuable. 
Uh, and so the government was really, really, we need to get all this set up. Um, so they agreed to it. The Canadian government entered into an agreement with the native peoples. Very rapidly afterwards, the bison uh, were gone. Uh, at which point, uh, the Canadian government had all the power. Suddenly, the native peoples did not have any power anymore, and they used uh, a policy of, you want, you want food, you want r rations, you're starving to death. The only way you're going to get them is if you allow us to shove you onto reservations where we are not, the Canadian government is not really going to make any concerted efforts to uh, transfer you over into an agro agricultural economy. Uh, even, even less so, even more so, we're going to actually basically imprison you on these reservations because we're afraid that you're going to rebel because we're treating you so horribly. We're starving you to death. Uh, we're going to institute a pass system. We're not going to actually let you even have, um, any, I, you you can't you can't even trade with the surrounding white economies. You we're, we're isolating you in every single way possible. Um, and you know through this, you know, and this is where I think you get into the whole thing of you can't just blame John A. Macdonald for this because even his defenders seem to say, oh, like, oh, he was a horrible racist, but he was the least horrible racist because um, there uh, a quote that James Daschuk uses of uh, J John A. Macdonald. Uh, is we cannot allow them to die for want of food. We are doing all we can by refu refusing food until the Indians on, are on the verge of starvation to reduce the expense. Uh, his John A. McDonald's defenders say, oh no, this is him being really good because he's, 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 that quote comes from him, um, comes from him responding to the, responding to the opposition parties of the day asking why are you spending so much so much money on these native people why aren't you just sort of letting them die there and you know if you give them food they're lazy and they won't work this is in the context of also uh, a population that is is heavily infected with tb and the worst thing you can do with someone with tb is put them to the point of starvation at which point tb erupts in these populations uncontrolled and kills thousands and thousands of them uh you know it's one of these things of uh they look at where like 1885 where they sort of crushed like kind of there's the louis real rebellion and there's also the uh the uh, native rebellions where they crushed them between then and then like the intervening i think when by the time this book ends which is 1891 a third of the native population has disappeared now a part of that is they've disappeared because they died a part of it is they've renounced their um Indian status because it's just so miserable. You are locked on a reserve, uh, and a part of it is they fled to the United States, where they're also also treated abominably. Um, so and so, but the thing is, you Dashchuk does such a masterful job of saying, "Oh look, we when we get to the end of this book, the native peoples." horribly reduced in thing, horrible health standards are shoved onto reserves. We're getting the, re the residential schools are coming in, which are also just breeding grounds for more and more disease. And, um, if you, if you're, if, if you refuse that, you, you get your rations put, take, taken away, you get food taken away from you as well. If you don't send your kids to uh, reservation schools, it's like, oh, you can draw. And then you take a look at how native people in Canada today are shoved onto reservations, economically isolated, uh, without, you know, proper drinking water with, uh, TB rates, which are still like, you know, um, eight times the, uh, population and just, just, uh, just generally the life expectancy of a native person in Canada is much lower than if you are, uh, a white, white person in, in the same country. It's, it's like you're in two different countries. No, you're in Canada, but you're in I, that part of Canada that has been was created at the very founding of Canada. Now, um, a lot of critics of this book say, "Oh, this is presentism. Presentism. We're you're criticizing John A. Macdonald for his beliefs back then, but that's like you know that was it was a racist time, so you can't you can't criticize him for that. It's like you know I'm not really interested in digging up the old guy and slapping him around." But what I am interested in is that we preserve an, a certain memory of John A. Macdonald as a as the founder of Canada. As oh, you know, he's 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 drunk and a little bit corrupt, but he was he was also very witty and all this stuff. It's like yeah, but we we leave out a, just a giant just giant um, 
festering uh, sword. This is a this is a man who, in addition to being prime minister at the time, was also the superintendent of Indian affairs because he knew that one of his major what um, what was a major roadblock for him was these native people and how can I move them out of the way? And once they're moved out of the way, how can I isolate them and marginalize them so that they will they won't give give the Canada any trouble? Um, and the thing about that John A. Macdonald. Uh, is like, yes, there's the man, but then there's, he is our, my representative. He is, um, m- the state. He is Canada and Canada hasn't addressed this, hasn't, hasn't, um, fully addressed this, hasn't, um, grappled with this, hasn't kind of come to terms with the fact that he, this is what he did. Uh, this is what his government did. This is what the other governments around him all participated in. Uh, this is what our, um, this, this is, the basis of my of prosperity of Canada today is based on this, and we continue to prosper on this. Uh, and um, that the only the the only so I well, it's like yes, John A. Macdonald, the guy, fine, but John A. Macdonald, the symbol of Canada, needs to be seriously, uh, um, seriously looked at and seriously taken down from pedestal. Now, this book, uh, it is. It is a very scholar, it is a scholarly book, and that is both its strength and its weakness. Uh, it is super focused on these events. Uh, anything that kind of comes in outside of it, it's not so, not so much interested in. Um, but that gives you the, it gave you, it gives me the great perspective of, uh, instead of looking at this from, kind of, oh, white settler, oh, you know, here are the people coming in and, and exploring these new lands. You're getting it from the perspective of, uh, the, of, uh, from native, native people of going every time there is more transportation, every time there is more settlers, every time there's that, what that equates to is more disease, a more death, more, you know, more suppression, uh, is what, is, is what this ends, is what it, it what it ends up doing. Now, James Daschuk himself, a really fine uh, historian. Uh, he's not a native person. This is this is not an own voices uh, history that I would be interested in uh, and in lis- listening about. This is a book that really had an impact uh, when it came out in 2013. Uh, a lot of there was a lot of articles in papers. A lot of times when people start questioning about John A. Macdonald taking his name off of stuff now, because while he is a historical figure, it doesn't necessarily mean we need to glorify him that he needs to be down here at, oh, he was a guy and he was a guy of his times. But a lot of the things of his time were deeply racist, deeply troubling. And a lot of his actions uh, still dramatically affect um both the native people today uh, and also the white settlers around them. Like, you know, we benefit, I benefit from his racism just as much as the native people uh, in my country uh, are hurt and damaged by that. And I think that I need to acknowledge that I'm benefiting from racist, uh, racist policies, racist policies that in some ways are still, still in evidence in Canada today. Um, So it's, it, it is a book that is sort of, it's laying out the facts. It's not, it, uh, I think both Sean and I found we needed to kind of do the work to kind of uh, educate ourselves of kind of the history surrounding these events. Uh, we needed needed to kind of help try and, not help, we needed to kind of organize our, organize um, the story it was telling. Sometimes it felt like it was meandering or pulling in. Like it was, it's a great uh, work of, taking a lot of recent scholarly studies and putting them into one place, but not always uh, in a way that is like sort of a popular historian who's telling a story. This is definitely history, history kind of, if you, if you can get, if you get what I mean. Um, but yeah, it's a book that had a, a big impact at the time. It won a one, it won a lot of prizes. Uh, one of the prizes that it won was the Sir John A. Macdonald prize. Uh, which is handed out by the Canadian Historical Association. I, I, I know, I know, this is a 101 white dude talking about this. Um, this is, you know, I'm, you know, I had to read Canadian history for dummies, uh, to just try and get myself a little bit up to speed, up to speed on this. Um, but, uh, that prize, that prize in, uh, t- in, um, in 2018 was changed. They took John A. McDonald's name off that prize. Uh, and it's now called the CHA Prize for Best Scholarly Book in Canadian History. 
Uh, and um, one of the people that when they reported this, one of the people that they interviewed was James Daschuk, uh, saying that, yeah, no, we need to we need to um, examine both the positive bits of John A. McDonald and the negative bits. So, yeah. It, it was a very it was a very difficult book to read. Uh, it was a very important book for me to read as a Canadian, uh, because uh, I'm not a patriotic per person, but I have you know I'm a Canadian, and uh, I you know it's I think it's important to uh, accept some of the the good stuff of being a Canadian while also looking at some really negative dark uh, blots. Uh, of what a of what a Canadian is, and realize exactly how deeply, deeply ingrained that is in our history from the very founding, the very founding of this country. Um, and this book really brought that home to me uh, in a very powerful way. So um, you know, it's a scholarly book. It's not a popular history, um, um, but I'd I'd highly recommend reading it. I'd highly recommend reading it. Yeah. All right. More videos later.